Hi everyone, my name is Claire Kelly. I'm an associate professor in the School of Psychology and Institute of Neuroscience at Trinity College Dublin. So I'm gonna close out today's workshop on methods for analyzing large neuroimaging data sets at um, OHBM 2022 with a very short reflection on our planetary crisis and what neuroimagers can do. So when it comes to the climate and biodiversity crises currently ravaging our planet, it's quite clear that the word unprecedented has really lost all meaning because we're using it on a daily basis now to describe things like the floods that are causing people in largely global um, South countries to um, leave their, their homes, to lose their lives and livelihoods, to describe record-breaking temperatures um, and heat, uh, for example, most recently seen in India and Pakistan, to describe wildfires that are on a yearly basis devastating habitats, wildlife and, and homes in places like Australia and Western US, to describe extreme weather events like floods that are starting to become a much more regular event in places unused to such extremes like Western Europe, to describe the relentless destruction of pristine rainforests and other ecosystems like coral reefs and our oceans, and to describe the rate of annihilation of animal and plant life. It's on a magnitude not seen since an asteroid crashed into the earth and wiped out about 75% of all species 65 million years ago. And in the current sixth great extinction, human activity is responsible for extinguishing species at a rate not seen in any of the previous mass extinctions. So I could go on, but I'm sure you get the picture. So what is the problem? <clears throat> well, the problem is that despite this ever uh, mounting, uh, despite the ever mounting facts, evidence of, of irreparable damage to our planet and the ecosystems that it is accumulating in front of our very eyes. Those of us in high emitting nations of the global north continue with our relentless burning of fossil fuels and our insatiable extraction, consumption and literal waste of the Earth's limited resources. In other words, despite international pacts, agreements, pledges, commitments, and other synonymous words, we continue with business as usual. The latest IPCC report is clear. If we continue with business as usual, current emissions place us on a trajectory of 3.2 degrees of warming by 2100. That is an uninhabitable planet. And it's not just the direct effects of warming on our climate and e ecosystems that are the problem. As UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has said, business as usual guarantees a future of climate chaos, ecological degradation, social unrest, and growing threats to peace and security. Addressing this planetary crisis by mitigating our changing climate, stalling biodiversity loss and, and restoring nature. All of this requires urgent and collective action at all levels of society. But the trouble is that most of us, and by us I mean neuroimagers, neuroscientists, psychologists, researchers, academics, we, we don't know where or how to start. And we doubt what contribution we could possibly make. We worry that we don't have the right expertise, that we might need to change too much about what we do, um, or that any small changes that we make won't have an impact on such a big problem. But to borrow the words of the inimitable Greta Thunberg, no one is too small to make a difference. Another way to put this is, in the words usually attributed to Edmund Burke, um, the Irish born philosopher, it is the greatest of all mistakes to do nothing because you can only do little. So where can you start? 
Well, recent papers from Aaron, Ray and colleagues have uh, very nicely outlined why the planetary crisis is a concern for neuroscientists and neuroimagers and what we can do about it. The actions range from reducing our air travel by pledging to fly less, to teaching or doing research on the crisis, to being aware of the environmental impact and sustainability of helium extraction and use in MRI scanning, to engaging in advocacy, perhaps at your university, um, to get your univers university to divest from fossil fuel use or to stop accepting research funding from fossil fuel companies to non-violent direct action like that advocated by Extinction Rebellion, or simply to um, talking about the planetary crisis with your colleagues, friends and family. And there's a really excellent TED talk from Catherine Hayhoe on how this works and how it's effective. But one of the simplest and, and really most immediate things we can all do is to reduce the energy usage and uh, associated environmental impact of our data analyses. So the methods that were demonstrated throughout this workshop, and in particular, um, the contributions from Javesh Ramdene and Melanie Garcia, were very much intended to set you off on the right foot in terms of implementing an efficient and effective uh, workflow that minimizes unnecessary, uh, unnecessary resource use. So this included topics like how to use reproducible research practices, recommendations for minimizing data pre-processing, you know, so that you only do it once, or maybe even that you um, use already pre-processed data or share your own pre-processed data can implement um, more efficient practices for data processing and storage by eliminating duplication and redundancy, for example. And one way to do this is to really level up your efficient code management through version control with Git, as Melanie has just talked about. You might also want to actively monitor and report on your and your lab's energy use during data processing. So just a few years ago, the, the idea of measuring the, uh, the resource demands and, and you know, associated carbon footprint of newer imaging processing pipelines would have been almost unthinkable, would have been really hard to do. Um, but really luckily in 2020, Organization for Human Brain Mapping, Sustainability and Environmental Action Special Interest Group, it's called the OHBMC SIG, um, was launched with the aim of supporting OHBM, its conference, its members, and the neuroimaging community more generally to reduce the environment, uh, environmental impact of their activities. And as one of its first actions, the CSIG established a working group that was focused on assessing the environmental impact of neuroimaging processing pipelines. So really helpfully, this working group has developed several um, carbon tracker toolboxes that are um, openly available for use. And these are, are based on some um, you know, existing utilities for monitoring CPU and GPU um, research used during data pro um, uh, processing like code carbon. And these have been really developed to help you um, track the resource use of bids apps and fMRI prep, for example. And there's even a tracker that will predict the carbon footprint of deep learning models so that you can perform um, more energy optimized model training and selection procedures if, if you're using those kinds of analyses. But you know, even just being aware of the resource use implications of your analyses is a really good start. And you can really imagine um, making this more impactful. For example, researchers could be asked to monitor and report on the research use of their analyses and tools when it comes to publication. Another really important action neuroimagers at all career stages can take is, is simply to better inform themselves about the origins and consequences of the planetary crises, as well as the potential solutions. So in addition to the papers that I just talked about from the likes of Adam Aaron and colleagues and Charlotte Ray and colleagues, um, we can really look beyond our field um, to the broader picture. And I really recommend um, books like Naomi Klein's This Changes Everything and Jason Hickel's Less Is More, 
um, as well as the uh, podcast Drilled and um, the fifth season of Seen on Radio. These are really, truly eye-opening uh, um, discussions. And finally, um, facing up to the planetary crisis is really a challenging task that is made much easier when you're part of a community. So finding like-minded folks to meet uh, with, to talk with, and to take action with is just one of the best things you can do to support yourself. So whether that's in your university, um, it could be a local community group, or a global community group like the OHBMC SIG, you, you'll really find that um, taking action on climate is much easier when you can uh, draw inspiration and, and motivation and solidarity and support from others and you can give back in return. So I'd really encourage you to seek out the CSIG at the conference and definitely to pop along to um, the afternoon symposium that is organized by members Winston Riang and uh, Charlotte Ray. And that um, uh, symposium is going to cover topics um, like tackling the carbon footprint of the annual meeting, flying less, um, pathways to a sustainable mind via the gut and sustainable deep learning models for neuroimaging. So with that, I, I hope that some of this has been helpful and that something I've talked about here can help empower you to take action. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me at claire.kelly at tcd.ie if you have any questions on how to get started. Thank you. <laughs>